What up fam? Today I'm going to go over my fueling strategy for the California International Marathon 2022. I'm going to be using Dr. Rappaport's method. If you fam aren't familiar with Dr. Rappaport's method fueling for the marathon, check out this video. I go over and explain what the method is and I do my Houston Marathon calculations in that video as well. Follow along if you would like. This video is for someone that is running CIM, assuming that the fueling or fuel that used during the marathon is the same. All right, so right in front of you. So basically this is the calculations. 118 pounds, that's how much I weigh. You can put how much you weigh there. There are 2.2 kilograms per pound. I weigh 53.64 uh, kilograms. Now we need to figure out the calories burned for the full marathon. 42.195 is a marathon distance in kilometers times 53.64 kilograms, which is 2,263 calories. I may round up and I may not round at all if it's not closer to the next whole number or next decimal point. 2,263 divided by 26.2 is calories per mile. So I need around 86 calories per mile. 86 calories times 0.83 of your VO2 max equals 71.2 calories per mile. Marathoner can run a marathon depending on how fit they are and how accustomed to the race they are anywhere from 75 to 85% of their VO2 max. I got some big goals and uh, I'll talk about in another video what it takes to run sub 218 to get the US Olympic trial standard. And being on the upper end for some of my fitness, it is possible doing the math. Um, I need to be at around 0.83 of my VO2 max in order to do so. 71.2 calories times 26.2 equals 1,865 calories from carbohydrate to run this marathon. Now, I take my body weight, 53.64 kilograms times 0.2, which is the average portion of leg mass of a runner, is 10.73 kilograms. 10.73 kilograms times 80 calories per kilogram of weight, conveniently, equals 858 calories needed for potential carbohydrate storage. Above, you know, the 1,865 calories is what I need to run the marathon. My muscles can hold about 858 calories. So 1,865 calories minus 858 calories equals 1,007 calories needed for the marathon distance. And this doesn't take into consideration weather, headwind, uh, the temperature. So you may be running hot or may not be running hot enough, depending on the conditions, probably more so hot than you think. So be conservative if you can. All right, so there are the calorie needs. The human body can tolerate about 60 to 90 grams per hour of carbohydrate or 240 to 360 calories per hour per, from carbohydrate. So do not take fuel all at once or near each other. Figure out within an hour time frame if you're within that 60 to 90 grams per hour range. Now fluids, we don't want to lose more than 2% of body weight, so 0.02 times 118 pounds, how much I weigh, equals roughly 2.4 pounds. The marathon, CIM has 17 water stops. They are five ounce cups, but let's be realistic. They're probably only gonna fill it up to four, and by the time you actually get it down, you're probably only get about two and a half ounces. So we know that one ounce equals one gulp. There are 16 ounces in a pound. 2.4 pounds times 16 ounces equals 38.4 ounces or 1.14 liters, meaning I need about one cup per water stop, which is about two and a half ounces per water stop. I'm gonna get about 42.5 ounces, which will be above. We need on average, at least for the amount of fluid, 350 milligrams of sodium per liter. You can also take 175, 350 milligrams of caffeine. Make sure you're cleared by a qualified healthcare provider before you decide to take caffeine. Um, caffeine helps refuel muscle quicker, decrease perceived exertion, and increases performance. My fueling this time around for this marathon is a combination of UCAN and Martin Gel Calf. I may do one regular one. So I did the math. I may have to move some stuff around from the second half to the first half. But the first half, I'm getting around 73 grams of carbohydrate. And the second half, I'm getting around 102 grams per uh, carbohydrate. So I'm going to take a gel in the starting line 10 minutes prior. I'm going to take UCAN, which has 70 calories, 90 grams of carbs, and 50 milligrams of NACL. I'm taking UCAN because I notice that I may have a little bit of rebound hypoglycemia, that if my glucose goes up too high, it rebounds just as quick. So I notice that even if I'm fueled, if I take something like Morton or something quicker, um, 
I'll feel it for a little bit and then I just crash. So the reason why I'm doing UCAN is that supposedly it's supposed to be a lot steadier release. So you won't get as big as a drop. I believe Triathlon Terran did a video on this where he was wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I'll link it up in the cards where he took UCAN, Morton, and then nothing, I think. And he showed that, you know, oh, UCAN, you know, can steadily, you know, decrease while Morton had this spike and then a, and a great drop kind of thing. So that's why I'm taking UCAN. I'm going to... Take a gel every five miles is ideal and noon endurance at eight stations. I did the math. You can check the uh, website, but this is realistically for each noon, each water stop. I'm only going to realistically get about half in the cup, hopefully. So there's an A station at 4.2 miles. The amount would be 10 calories, two and a half grams of carbs, 60 milligrams of sodium and two and a half ounces of fluid. Um, you can pause the video, check it out yourself. I'll go through a couple more. Uh, eight stations at 6.4, 8.5. Um, the ones with the little asterisks where the Martin is is Martin Gel Calf. So I pretty much I'm alternating Martin and you can every five miles. This red 103 is the predicted at 12 mile if you're holding 515 pace um, for the whole marathon. So it is 103 minutes. That's my hour mark. I mean, I could go back a little bit, but whatever. Um, and then the second half, if you notice, I am more fluid heavy the second half than the first half. I got times two along the eight stations on the second half compared to the first half because um, it's going to be chaos the first half. You may have a hard time getting to an aid station, ideally, to get that water down. And plus, you're probably already hydrated to begin with, more so this uh, the first half than the second half. So logically, it would make sense to... Um, hit the A stations more the second half than the first half because you're going to be dehydrated and it'll be easier because everyone kind of would have stringed out at that point. So that's what I got there. Lots of uh, um, aid stations. And I'm also going to take one of the goo gels, I believe. There we go. At mile 17.9 aid station, I'm going to take a goo gel, which is 100 calories, 22 grams of carbs, and 60 milligrams of sodium. Pause it if you need to at certain sections to do your own math and figure out what you need to do. With all that being said, 1,007 calories minus 820 calories is I'm um, 187 calories short. So doing the math, 187 divided by 71.2 from above is the calories needed per mile. Subtract backwards from 26.2, I will bonk around mile 24. So ideally, like I said, I was going to run around 83% of my VO2 max. So what I could do is run closer to 80 the first half and closer to 85 the second half. So I'm using more um, fat as fuel and less carbohydrate. So I'm burning the candle slower, using more carbohydrate at the end to help get me that last two miles, ideally. I can always take another gel. I was thinking about it, maybe pack another gel in a pocket or taking a goo gel on one of the aid stations. But let's be honest, ideally, do you really want to carry, you know, a gel in all four corner pockets of your Nike Air Swift shorts, gels in your arm sleeves and then carrying a gel or a bottle? That's a lot of stuff to carry. And I want to be as comfortable as possible when doing so. Uh, for total fluid, I'm going to be taking 58.5 ounces, which is well above the 38.4. I added all the two and a half ounces, you know, the times two ones, the regular ones, and I assumed about one ounce of fluid per gel. Um, it may be a little less, but water is, I believe, like the first or second ingredient in most of them anyway. So uh, I'm getting 1.7 liters of fluid, 1.7 times 350, meaning I need 595 milligrams of sodium minimum for that amount of fluid. And we are getting a lot more, which is fine. You guys can check out the CIM website. They have the breakdown of fueling and hydration. They talk about all the eight stations, whether they have gels and whatnot and like the nutritional needs of, you know, the goal time, the average pace, the calories, the sodium, the potassium, the fluids, based on your finish time from two and a half to five hours. And ironically, even doing my math, my math falls within the ranges. You can check for yourself uh, for what I am trying to achieve. And that is my CIM fueling marathon video. I'm gonna do a video on what it takes to break 218 in the marathon. Um, and this is going to come into play. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about VO2 max. We're going to be talking about the fueling. We're going to be talking about the uh, percent grade decline on a course like CIM and Super Shoes and how much that can help you be able to dip under uh, that 218 barrier because it's very difficult. So like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for when I post the next video. Love you guys. Catch you guys next time. Peace.